where do you easily find content for social media? This is a question that comes up a lot. Like, how do I get content for my social media channel? What do I have to do to get content? Please tell me, Edward, how can I get out there? Well, I'm going to tell you. Yeah, let's go. We came a long way. That's what the song say. And I could do all things. I could do all things. Yeah, I could do all things. Yeah, yeah. We came a long way. That's what the song say. And I could do all things. For First, I'm going to clear up a misconception about DIY social media marketing. So this goes for everybody, not just cosmetic dentists. DIY social media is not inexpensive. In many cases, it can be more expensive. And here's why. So first of all, like when I have the conversation with you guys, um, either in this session or in past sessions, first of all, understanding what the product is. So it's not about making funny videos. A lot of a lot of people think, oh, let me just make this funny video. I'm going to get some engagement. No, it is a tool that you use to pre-qualify people and to get them to have some interest in your products and services. So that's number one in terms of the pitfall of the platform. So people just think we just put content out there. Number two, it is a tool that is uh, something that is easy to I'm trying to find the right words, guys. I'm trying to find the right words. I had it at the tip of my tongue. Ugh. Okay, so the first misconception is that it is it is easy. Um, so just understanding what the platform is. The other thing is just understanding that the the platform itself is a tool. It's not just for fun. It's for that pre qualification. So I said that already. The other thing is in terms of utilizing teams to make the content. Well, you actually actually have to do the that mathematical analysis. Uh, in terms of the cost, uh, cost value analysis, if I take somebody out of their job and have them making social media videos, how much is that going to cost me in direct costs? And then also, how how much is that going to cost me in indirect costs? In you know, in terms of them not seeing patients. And if I'm having three people make videos each week, someone to hold the camera, someone to to maybe narrate or direct, in quotes someone to do it, I can take that same amount of money. Um, and that could be hundreds, it could be thousands, depending on how much time you invest and actually hire a social media team to make some content that's relevant. So um, that was just a, a, a quick tidbit about the DIY. Okay, so number one, DIY, make your own content. Um, in terms of DIY, you can invest in a cell phone. A cell phone is something that you can have on hand. It doesn't have to be a lot of money. You can get a offline cell phone. You're going to use one uh, on uh, one of the, the sale platform, whether it's Facebook Marketplace or eBay or, or even Craigslist, and just keep that at the office. Connect this to your social media accounts. Make sure you password lock it because if it gets stolen or if it disappears, that person has access to your social media accounts. But um, a cell phone is certainly something that you can have on hand so, so that way, when you want your team to take some pictures or make some quick videos, it is right there at your fingertips. So, so that is uh, an easy thing that you can do. If you have a little bit more budget, I would say to invest in a semi-professional or professional camera. And I'm talking about maybe 250 uh, to 500 bucks for a, a relatively new to use one. Um, you can, again, see these on those social media platforms as well. That is going to give you some really crispy photos, really sharp. Um, the only thing that you probably have to look at in terms of that is just to make sure that you get some great angles. That can be a bit of a challenge for some people in terms of just where do I take the picture. But other than that, you should be golden. And the default the settings in terms of those auto camera settings, those are pretty good. So um, that would be number two. The next thing I would say is to look for stock images on um, some of these platforms. And I'm going to have preferences this this with we don't endorse any of these platforms and some of them we are uh, partners with so if you see any of the links we have affiliate links on our platforms but i will say like a vista create vista create is a platform that is similar to canva also i would recommend canva um, that has a photo library where you can create content but it's also a great source of original and unique content if you know how to use it properly um, also adobe and Shutterstock are great platforms that you can use 
to to create content. You can create a get a subscription. It gives you a certain amount of images each month, depending on what the rights are with the platforms. But I definitely recommend those. Uh, I would definitely stand away from stay away from the free platforms. The free platforms can be good to get the con the content, but the challenge is with a lot of those free free platforms is that sometimes or every once in a while an image lands there that doesn't belong there and it may be even something like a getty images uh image and i've seen this before uh, so like when we're building our client sites we don't use any of that free content um that stuff is dangerous because you can run into if you can't prove where you got the content from or if you don't have really good notes that can lead into a, a dmca legal issue, which is that Digital Music Copyright Act. Uh, essentially, a lot of you guys are familiar with that with, uh, with music, don't copy music, but it also goes for other works for it. Um, um, and then another quick notes on those images. Uh, so in terms of the images that you're getting from these platforms, the, the images, wherever you're getting, whether you have a photographer or whether you're using one of those other platforms, is that you have to make sure that you are within the licensing guidelines for those particular images. So for instance, just because you can use an image on your website doesn't mean that you can make a t-shirt and print those images if that's not what's part of the, the, the license. And in some scenarios, uh, people actually do stuff like that. Or sometimes the content, you can only use it in a web format. So if you have background music and you're using it on a web format, that's great. But if you take that same music and you use it in a, let's say a TV commercial, well, that's a different platform and that may have different rights and you may be in violation of those. So that's just something to keep in mind in terms of, of content that you're using. Uh, and then in terms of actually using the content, I would say to, um, to adhere to some basic guidelines. So this is super important. A lot of you guys don't even think about stuff like this, but um, don't, use the images in a, a way such a way that it's going to make the subject of the image look bad and i say that to say so for instance um some some of these ads which are funny ads and you see they're professional actors they're paid to look a certain way and for purpose of this conversation i'll use like like um a womanizer um those people in those commercials are paid to look like that. They are paid actors. So they understand that there's certain stipulations that come with that. And so people may see them on the street. How did you do? How dare you do that to someone? So, okay, they're actors. They know they're actors. You should know they're actors too. In terms of the visual media space, there are so many different images out there. Sometimes people just take images just to take images. And those images are used in so many different platforms that those platforms, um, you don't know where it's gonna be used at the end of the day. And so it may end up on some weird platforms or looking out of context of what the original artist thought that it, it represented. And in that scenario, um, I would say to make sure you use care because that can lead to other issues and other challenges. A side, that's just a sidebar, but essentially just make sure that the images uh, don't make people look bad. And also, um, in terms of the images, make sure that those images represent your target demographic. That is who your office is about. So if I'm in a certain zip code and that zip code has a certain type of demographic, um, I'm going to use images uh, that are relevant towards that zip code. And if I go to a different zip code and they have a different de demographic, I'm going to use different images that represent that. And that could be anything from um, from social to religious to socioeconomical, you again want to meet people where they are. So you shouldn't really be insensitive to your demographic by posting images that aren't relevant or don't have a connection with that because you're either going to upset some people or you're going to have um, just a disconnect and you're going to end up wasting money um, at the end of the day. Anyway, I want to know your thoughts, your comments. Uh, put them in the comments below. Again, if you have the opportunity, do that thing, smash that like button. All right, guys, I'll see you all next video. Yeah, yeah, we came a long way. That's what the songs say. And I can do all things.